So it takes those jarring experiences to make us stop and be like, ah, oh. <laughs> what is life trying to teach me? And what is, what is it trying to tell me? We have all experienced how difficult it can be to go through a hard time in life. The other day I was watching a movie, so Eat, Pray, Love, and it had me reflecting on life and um, the lessons that you can learn from going through a difficult patch. And it really got me thinking about how sometimes you can go through what you think is a difficult patch and you can't wait to come out of that difficult patch. But when you stop and really, really think about it, the biggest life lessons you've had have come when you're going through something difficult or something unpleasant but we tend to digress and become comfortable when everything is just perfect there are times when you're not having any challenges and we love those times right but the times when you are going through a challenge um it usually results in a shift in the way you see things in perception it usually grows your mindset as well so whilst it might not be pleasant there is um, so much uh, to learn so what other lessons that i learned you know about suffering or going through challenges from watching it pray love those are the things i'm going to be discussing with you today what can challenges teach us remember to subscribe it would mean the world to me if you subscribed so for those of you who haven't watched it pray love it's the story of a middle-aged woman her name is liz and she goes through a midlife crisis um and you know ends up divorcing her husband quitting her job traveling to italy and then to india and then back to bali um and she's this you know this traveling soul you know who just wants to experience life at different stages when she divorces her husband she describes what she calls a deep eternal hole that cannot be filled with career with other things and she jumps from her divorce into the arms of another man so she jumps straight into another relationship but the relationship is very short-lived it doesn't last for long because she realizes it's not enough you know um, to answer the questions that she has and she's wondering why am i not happy but her husband has said you know what it doesn't matter if we're not happy but at least we are together so we can just be unhappy together <laughs> And Liz gets to a point where she's like, no, I don't want to be unhappy together. I don't want to be unhappy um, with you. So the first lesson I get from here is when you're going through a challenging experience, sit with it. You know, so many times we are tempted to pacify and run away from life's experience, you know, by watching TV, drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, um, you know, getting into one relationship after another, all in an attempt to not feel the pain that we are actually feeling in our hearts and all in an attempt to sort of sugarcoat and just cover up the wound, you know, even though it's infected, you want to cover it up and actually not experience it. And you know our culture like modern day culture is very like a fast food culture where you know you can just walk out and you know there's this entertainment in your eyes your senses are being bombarded by so much stimulation and it's easy to actually not be in the moment it's very easy to not feel um the moment but difficult experiences um uh, it actually a chance for us to sit down and feel the pain like many people call challenging moments so maybe the loss of a loved one or you're going through grief they call it the dark night of the soul you know uh, where you're like man I can the sun is not even shining I can't even see the sun and you know if you haven't experienced that good on you but you know for most people you have experienced that situation where it all seems dark and blurry and you think that the sun is not going to shine again um, so in those moments instead of running away it's important to just sit there and feel the pain and I kid you not feeling pain is painful like it's unpleasant it's really painful but it's actually it's actually the fastest way of going through a challenge 
facing it head on and saying, all right, pain, I'm gonna sit with you and actually feel you. And sometimes people get into denial and you know, some people use affirmations and this and that to sort of lie, them, lie to each other out of the situation. So someone will be like, oh, I am this and I am happy and I am good. And you really know you're not happy and you really know you're not good. You know, so instead of trying to jump to a stage where you're visualizing this happy experience and this happy occurrence, there are moments when you just need to sit with that sad feeling and that sad experience and just let it, you know, wash over you and, you know, let yourself feel it. And what happens is when you sit with that pain or when you sit with that loss and you sit with that anger, you know, you realize that it's actually not as scary as it is, uh, as it seems, and you can have a conversation um, with it, you know, and try to see what lesson that experience is there to teach you. So in Eat, Pray, Love, um, you know, Liz, you know, like I said, she jumps into uh, another relationship. She goes to Italy, sees all these beautiful sights, but she still realizes that there's a gaping hole within her and she doesn't know what to do with it. So she ends up at a monastery or at an ashram in India where she spends some time just learning how to sit still in silence and just feel what she's going through. And as she sits still, she realizes that part of the challenge is, you know, her not forgiving herself because, you know, like let's say for her husband, he still loved her and he still missed her and he was really hurt by, um, the divorce and as for Liz she had lost all her money so she's a middle-aged woman and she's starting afresh again so it was for her a lesson of just learning to just sit still in that silence which I found to be a valuable takeaway and something that we can actually apply in our lives whilst we might not all have the privilege of being able to throw everything away and travel to Italy and travel to India you can go out and just sit, you know, in nature because nature tends to be very therapeutic and very healing. Personally, I find when I sit in nature, I feel very calm. Second lesson, going through a challenging situation and something that I took away from Eat, Pray, Love is forgiveness. So forgiving yourself and forgiving others. So. When Liz is at the ashram, she meets a man who has been there, I don't know for how long, but he came there, he had been living, you know, like a life where he was, he had a high powered career, he was drinking excessively after work because of stress and he was in multiple affairs and um, cheating on his wife. And then one day he leaves work um, and then he goes to the bar and he gets really drunk. So after he gets drunk, he knows that he's not supposed to drive home by himself, but he actually just takes the car keys and drives home. So he's driving home, he's speeding home. And then as he gets into his driveway, his son had been there sitting, waiting for him to come home. And you know, the son is busy playing, but then he does not see his son. So is he? gets to home he's speeding he gets into the driveway and then he nearly runs his son over thankfully his son manages to get away because his son knew that you know his dad you know tends to get really drunk and he was just really um the son had gotten used to being fast and getting away from his dad so he managed to get away but his wife saw everything from the window and the next morning the wife was like you know what i think i've taken i've put up with enough from you i'm gonna take my son and we're going so the wife takes um their son and then they leave him so this man was left with the guilt of you know nearly killing his son you know having caused all this grief to his wife and now his wife and his son leaving him so he leaves everything and then he goes on a quest so now he's living at this ashram in india and you know the lesson he teaches liz is the uh the person the only person you can forgive you can forgive others and you can forgive yourself but you cannot force or make other people forgive you 
and that's something that you know you need to come to peace with and that's another thing usually when you're going through a challenging situation most of the time there's another person involved or maybe there might be betrayal involved or there might be conflict uh, involved and it calls for forgiveness so whether you're in the wrong or you're in the right when you actually forgive that situation and forgive that person it frees you and that's what Liz realizes she realizes that she cannot make her ex-husband forgive her but she can forgive herself and she can forgive him for the things that needed forgiving um, she can forgive all the money <laughs> that has been lost and she can only forgive herself so she can only forgive what is within her reach and as for the people you know that have something against you or people that you need forgiveness from you can only ask for forgiveness and allow them to forgive you whether they want to or not the third lesson of working through challenging situations um, that we come across in life is actually trusting life again so let's take for example that you know you have been betrayed and hurt in a past association or relationship Trusting life again means opening your heart again to love instead of closing it. So Liz, um, you know, after leaving India, after leaving Paris, she comes back to Bali and in Bali, she meets this man. He's called Philippi. Philip, Philip, Philippi. <laughs> Don't know how to say the name, but she meets this man and she falls in love with him. But she feels like she's losing herself in loving Philippi so that sense of losing herself she feels like she doesn't want to lose herself again in marriage she doesn't want to lose herself again in life like what happened before so as she's falling in love with Felipe, Felipe um, is also divorced and you know has been single for so many years and has finally opened his heart to a woman um, and then, uh, so Philippi, you know, tells Liv, you know what, I love you. Let's take things to the next level. And Liz actually breaks off the relationship. And now this is where Liz goes back to this wise man that she had met years earlier and that she was seeing. And he's asking her, hey, Liz, are you smiling from your liver? Like I told you, she's like, yes, I'm smiling from my liver, which is another key lesson that I took from this movie. I'm just in love with the idea of smiling, not just with your mouth, but with your liver. And then she's like, all right. And um, Liz, how's your relationship? She's like, oh, I actually broke it off because because I felt like I was losing myself. And then this old wise man says to Liz, Liz, sometimes in life to lose your balance for love is one way of finding it. So he was saying, yes, you've gone through what you've gone through before, you've been hurt, betrayed, now you have healed. And in life, you know, um, even though you want things to stay where they are, you know, losing your balance in love by trusting someone again is one way of finding your balance in life, which is a true test of, you know, have you really healed? Have you uh, really moved on? So that's important. Learning to trust again, learning to love again, learning to smile again, learning to be happy, learning to be joyous and, you know, moving on past whatever obstacle you're going through today because at the end of the day you find that life has so many beautiful experiences and even those things that are not so pleasant when you come to unpack those things you will find that there's hidden gems there there's hidden lessons there's new friendships there's new relationships um, there's new experiences and every day you know is a blessing on its own but you need to actually open your heart in order to see that last lesson um, you know about dealing with a challenging situation and moving on and something that I got from Eat, Pray, Love is that see every challenge as a teacher. So see every life experience, every challenge as a guide along your way. And you know, it brings the movie to such a beautiful end where she says, you know, where it says, you know, there's something um, called the quantum. She says the quantum physics of life and it goes something like this. When you um, are willing to let go, when you're willing 
willing to view your life experiences as a guide and as a teacher and when you're willing to open your heart to love again and to forgive the parts of your life that are not pleasant then the truth will not be withheld from you you will see lessons from those life experiences through those difficult um, challenges and you will come to look back with joy at those things you know so take for example maybe you had a bully in school i remember when i was in grade one i had there was this classmate of mine and she was i think she was three years older because their family used to travel um she was called charlotte <laughs> thank god i don't remember her last name but their family used to travel so as a result she was behind so she was um, in grade one when she was supposed to be in grade three so she was older and taller and i started school a year earlier and i remember being in class and this girl you know would literally bully me but you know thankfully my older sister was also at the school and um i remember there was a time when i couldn't put up with the bullying so i told my older sister <laughs> and she came to my rescue and she was like don't bully my sister again you know but i know for some of you maybe you didn't have someone to defend you from a bully so what was that bully teaching you um or what was that negative experience actually um teaching you and you know most times when you sit down to actually unpack you realize that oh my goodness you know losing that particular thing was teaching me the value of you know uh, non-material possessions or you know I'm um, losing that particular job opened up space for me to come up with new ideas and come up with an amazing idea and maybe now you're the owner of a completely new business you know maybe that midlife or quarter life crisis was actually you know teaching you to just draw back and learn more about yourself because sometimes we're so busy 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 going through the motions and we don't stop and realize that things are actually going wrong or we don't realize that you know whatever we were doing has now saved its time and now it's time for a new thing so it takes those jarring experiences to make us stop and be like ah oh. <laughs> what is life trying to teach me and what is what is it trying to tell me so in the end even though challenging experiences are never fun to go through they are a very deep and meaningful life experience and it's up to us to just slow down and listen to what those um lessons are actually teaching us and actually listen um to the lesson behind the challenge so i i hope um this was as meaningful to you as it was to me so tell me um in the comment section below when you go you know the think of a challenge that you faced in the recent past what was the life lesson from it was it meaningful um what lesson did you actually learn from it thank you so much for watching if you haven't done so already please remember to subscribe leave a comment like and share i will really really appreciate it my name is lorraine and have a beautiful day